What the Pope and his aides do not use from the farm is sold to Vatican employees and retirees at their discount supermarket. Uh, Savario Patrillo, director of the Papal Villa, said that the farm once hosted two wild boars that had been given to Pope Paul VI, but they were a bit rowdy, as wild boars often are. Patrillo said the gazelles of Pius XI were more tranquil. They were given to the Pope by the Apostolic Delegate in Egypt, and the Pope had great affection for them. He would visit them every time he went to Castel Gandolfo and always had some treat to feed them. And that's a great story to end on. That's all the information we have for you on this Friday, September 2nd. We're going to take a quick break right now. We'll be back talking with the sinner, Lino Rulli, right after this. Most of you won't recognize me or my real name. It's Norma McCourty. I'm also known as Jane Roe, the plaintiff in the Supreme Court case, Roe versus Wade, which legalized abortion in America and changed our nation in an unprecedented way. Back in 1973, I was a very confused 21-year-old with one child and facing an unplanned pregnancy. At the time, I fought to obtain a legal abortion. But the truth be told, I have three daughters and have never had an abortion. However, upon knowing God, I realized that my case, which legalized abortion on demand, was the biggest mistake of my life. You see, abortion has eliminated 50 million innocent babies in the U.S. alone since 1973. Abortion scars an untold number of post-abortive mothers, fathers, and families, too. You read about me in history books, but now I'm dedicated to spreading the truth about preserving the dignity of all human life, from natural conception to natural death. Joining us now is a man who needs no introduction. He's been seen on Catholic TV uh, as the host of Generation Cross. He's also known uh, to his radio audience from Sirius XM as the Catholic guy. And now he's known as an author of his book, and Father Reed has it right there, Sinner. And Lino Rulli is with us today. And Lino, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for inviting me. I have to say, first of all, you shook my hand. Yeah. I'm a germaphobe. Why uh -uh. must we shake hands? Oh, that's so, right, you are. So I, I can't focus on this interview right now because all I can think of is how dirty my hands are right Ooh, now. I no offense, Kevin. I should have watched this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should have. <laughs> and Father Reed, may I say? Yes. First of all, we, we've known each other many years. Would we, would, would we, are we friends? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know if we were or not. We're more than Facebook <laughs> friends. We're more than Facebook friends. Here's the thing. I've known you for many years. You've never invited me to be on the show. You've, you've, you've constantly kept me away from it. In fact, Jay Fadden is usually here, right? Yeah. I heard Jay <laughs> left because I'm booked. <laughs> so I was very hurt by this. So when people ask me, why did I write this book, Sinner, I can make it very clear. You want to know why I wrote it? Please, tell us. It's the only way to get booked on this show. <laughs> the only way I can get booked is if, uh, not, and now I'm here because hey, I'm worked. an author. It worked. <laughs> Nice job. Hey, Thank you. That was, that was my first question, why you wrote the book. Well, let's yeah. move along. Man. Come on, we're going we're gonna to run out of time. Let's go to break. We're out of time. We're out of questions. <laughs> well, you're a busy guy. you got a radio show. You're doing a lot of different things. Why did you decide all of a sudden to write a book? We're sticking, with the, we're sticking with the first yeah, question, yeah, Kevin. We're sticking with the first question. You're not going to derail our question. I got no notes after that. <laughs> well, let me see these show notes here. That's the first question. You're sticking to it no matter what. <laughs> I wrote the book. Because, so, so the first answer about <laughs> wanting to be on This Is The Day, that didn't pan I out. thought you could expand on it. You know, okay. Could, yeah. Uh, yeah, I probably can expand <laughs> on that. I wrote the book because somebody asked me to. Mm -hmm. I know that's a great story, but I'll elaborate just a it's little bit. It's not God. God has not <laughs> asked me to do anything in my life. That's, uh, he's never spoken to me in a clear voice, I should say, <laughs> Father Reed. May I call you Father Reed? You can call me anything you want, but Father Reed will do. I, I call you a lot of things off the air, but I think I I'll keep it clean here because I hear it's live. So if I curse or say something yeah, untoward, yeah. it goes do right on the air. There's no delay. We don't have that delay. We don't okay, have the delay yeah, so either. Right, right. Should have installed the delay. <laughs> <laughs> should have Probably installed should have You, you knew in advance warning I was going to be here, didn't you? <laughs> I, I wrote the book because, in many ways, religious people. You're, you're a religious person, Kevin? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. You believe in I God? I try, yeah. I okay. Yeah, Father yeah, Reed? Yeah. Very religious. <laughs> You're a very, very religious person. I know that. Yeah. You know, sometimes I would think maybe there's a doubt or a doubting in a good and loving there God. There is in all of us. With it's those like glasses. we're all sinners. You know, there's a, there's a doubt, doubter in, in every one of us. You know. There is, right? It's part of the human package, you know. Well, yeah, exactly. I won't, I won't elaborate on the human package. Let's but move back on. Back to why you wrote the book. Right. We're going to get this out of you. I, you know what? Let me tell you. High water. The reason I wrote this book was because, honestly, when it comes to religious figures, religious leaders, and I'm not saying I'm one of them, but I do work in this Catholic media thing, right? 
And what I've always found is that I feel like I come up way short of what I think everybody else is doing in their lives. In other words, if the three of us are in line for confession, I'm thinking Father Rod Reed had one, you know, impure thought once. I'm thinking, I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't, who knows? You killed a guy with your bare hands. I'm scared. He knows too much. <laughs> That's right. I, I did my research. And then I think to myself, I'm the sinner. I feel like I'm always the bad one, and I'm the one who sometimes wants to give up on my faith. I'm the one who thinks, why do I keep trying? Everybody else seems closer to God than I am. Everybody seems to believe more than I do. Nobody seems to sin the way I do. Why do I keep trying? Well, I love the church. I love God. So that's why I keep trying, but I'm a sinner. And I fail, and I'm not one of these pious, I too am a sinner. No, I mean, I'm really a sinner. I'm really not as good at being Catholic as I want to be. And I want to see if other people can relate to these types of stories and these types of sins. I'm amazed that uh, people like Howard Stern, shock jock that he is, <laughs> and then also, and I heard this on another interview that you did, Archbishop <laughs> Timothy Dolan, the two of them, for example, give this great reviews. A so shock What do you jock, attribute that to? <laughs> a shock jock and a shock, shock archbishop, quite frankly, yeah. are the two, I mean, isn't that what, in my mind, isn't that what we're supposed to be about? As, as Catholics, we're supposed to be, you know, supported by the church, supported by our bishops. So a guy like Archbishop Dolan. Yeah. And reaching out to the rest of the world and saying, hey, what we do, I'm not a Catholic ostrich. I don't bury my head in the sand. And with my nose, <laughs> I couldn't really get in there very far anyway if I wanted to. So the idea, and uh, so Gary Delabate, who's the executive producer of the Howard Stern Show, Baba Booey, he was nice enough, I've known him over the years, and he was nice enough to say, yeah, I'll... I'll endorse the book. He was born and raised Catholic. He has real doubts about Catholicism. And yet, as he says, this book might even make a sinner like him believe. Nobody's going to call up during the show, are they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't think so. But no, I don't think there should be, should be any Baba Booey calls coming in, Kevin. I hope not. Uh, now, you, you've been on Generation Crosses, is what people here on, on Catholic TV are familiar with. Uh, and maybe if you could take us back to that time, and uh, had you any thoughts that you would get to this point, be a, a host of a radio show in New York, or, you know, when you were doing that show back in uh, Minnesota? I believe right, that. Minnesota. You said it with the right Minnesotan <laughs> accent as well. Well I've played. Been, been trained. Uh, yes, I've, I've my, my whole career figured out. <laughs> I've got this whole thing planned out. I thought to myself, here's the plan. Let's start a little Catholic TV show when I'm 26 years old, right at the prime of my career. Let's move right into Catholic media. One day, uh, I'll be able to branch out and be in markets like Boston, and then one day I'll be able to get into radio, one day I'll be able to write a book, and one day Father Reed will invite me on his show. Wow, it's and amazing. It's all come to pass. It's the culmination of my career. It's all downhill from here. <laughs> really, this is it. This is it. Of course not. I always think it's hilarious when people try to make plans. Mm -hmm. I don't think any real strong believer, quite frankly, should make plans and say, this is what I'm going to do, Lord, because... We can propose things. God can dispose of these ideas at any time. And I think you should have, that, you have to have a sense of humor about all of these things. Because who on earth could have predicted where we would be at this point in our lives and that point in our lives? That's and a good so, point. You, well, thank you, Father Reed. I made a good point. It took me six <laughs> minutes, but what, you know, what, why, why not? I got there eventually. Yeah, because you got one. coming at the end. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to be open to God's plan and let him sort of lead us to places we would never have wanted to go or places we never wanted to needed to go in many ways and just be open to what God's got for us. And the thing is that if people read this book... And, did you, I, and did you read the book, Father I Reed? scanned it. <laughs> you and, scanned um, it? I scanned it. You got a scanner See, in the back? <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you learn a lot about Lino Rulli, I mean, not just because there's pictures, but you learn a lot, of, <laughs> this, a lot of funny stories, let's face it. And you know, I know half the stories anyway, so that's why I'm, I'm still, I have still yet to read the book in there? its entirety. <laughs> uh, no, I've, just, you know, I've heard him speak. And I've, anyway. Listen to the radio you don't show. You have to say, oh, I've heard him speak. Like, it's a big, <laughs> tedious thing, like cleaning the toilets. I've heard him speak. He's so annoying. But there are some great stories. For example, could you just tell us about when you, when you met the Pope and you, you kind of bumped your nose up against his ring? I like that one. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah. Thank you very much. It's classy. So I met him back. I met the Holy Father back in 1999, John Paul II, obviously. And, uh, and when I met him, obviously, it's, a, it's so, so exciting. Got to have Mass in the private chapel and then got to speak with him afterwards. So this beautiful experience, and I don't know if people can tell at home, but this is, uh, this is not a prop. This is real. <laughs> this is, this is, this is not a, a prosthesis. <laughs> no, 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 no. So this is a real nose I have, unfortunately. And when I met uh, the Pope, anybody gets nervous. Uh, the same nerves I have being on This Is The Day, I experienced when meeting. Yeah, I can wow. tell you. Well, you can imagine. Anytime I can tell you're I'm around, trembling. I'm, I'm around holiness, this is what happens. <laughs> 
So when I go and uh, so you know uh, he gives me a rosary, and so I go to kiss the ring. And so I go, I, I just go nose first into the ring. And, I, I, and you know, how, how much are you going to, like, negotiate around the Holy Father's hand until the Swiss guards come and stab you? <laughs> they don't know what's going on. So I look up, and there's the Pope smiling at me like, really? Really? Did you just hit the nose into the ring? You didn't kiss the ring? You hit the nose into the ring? There are stories in this book that are embarrassing. That's one of them that I've never really shared before. But I hope reminds people of what the human condition is. Mm of failing, of embarrassments, of falling and getting back up and trying again. That's my spiritual life, that's my day-to-day -day life. Now, did the Pope have Germex as well? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> Immediately, I Purell and, and Purell my nose as well. Now, th talk about what you, uh, you know, if I get into a little more of the phil philosophy of writing the book, but what would you like people to take away from the book and just, just the many different experiences that you go to, maybe they can relate, or uh, what, what are some of the things you hope people there. We're all sinners. Yeah. At the end of the day, I know that's a very simple thing to say, but we're all sinners. It's really as simple as that. If you think you're an amazing Catholic, if you think you're a great Catholic, chances are you're not. Uh, if you can start with the fact that saying, I'm a sinner, I don't deserve these things in my life, I don't deserve God's grace, I don't deserve God's forgiveness and mercy, I think that's an excellent place to start. And to never look back at our sins and think, that's it, I'm going to give up on faith. But to always say, I'm going to learn from my sins, I'm going to learn from my past, I'm going to move forward with God's help. Okay. How, about, how about Catholic guilt? How do you feel about that? You know, my sister's always saying, you know, that, that darn Catholic guilt. They instilled that in us when we were growing up. And I said, that's right, and it's still there. Do you, do you feel that Catholic guilt? I feel that Catholic guilt right now in uh, <laughs> not agreeing with you. No, I don't feel it at all. Of course I feel Catholic guilt is a good thing. Is that a good thing? How could it not be a good thing? You know, when Kevin, like we were saying at the beginning of this segment, you've killed a man. <laughs> and, you know, I get you, over with it. your bare hands. Yeah. With your bare hands, that's right. If you didn't feel some shame, some remorse, some regret, that means you don't have a well-formed conscience. If, if, if Father Reed, I just for some reason pick him up and throw him at the, uh, that'd be fun, by the way, but <laughs> we'll do that I'm afterwards. Too. Uh, the, the after show. How could I not feel guilty? So to say Catholic guilt sounds like a bad thing, it means... You have a well-formed conscience. You know the difference between right and wrong. And a person should feel guilt when they do something wrong. Hey, I cheated on my wife. I don't feel bad. That means you've done something wrong in your conscience. And maybe Catholicism has not formed you the way the church is trying to. So Catholic guilt is a great thing because it means you've done the right thing and realize it's the wrong thing. Now, the, the actual book has a very beautiful feel to it. Unlike me. The cover me. is nicely designed. <laughs> And where can people get their hands on this? Because you've now whetted everybody's appetite and mine to actually read it. <laughs> yeah, then are you going to read the book? I'm going to read <laughs> it this weekend. No. This weekend. This weekend. I'm Labor Day week. It's not laborious you. reading, however, this Labor Day. That, but that's the whole point of Labor Day weekend. A lot of footnotes or anything like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tons of footnotes. A lot of research went into this book. Uh, Amazon.com or wherever fine books are sold. I don't know what that means. That that, that's what they tell me to say. One. Wherever fine books are sold. I like that. Well, thanks so much Sinner. Wait, no, for being here. It was great to have you. Continue success. Uh, any, um, you know, sequels coming? Up? Saint, maybe? Next Saint will not be coming. <laughs> uh, still sinning after all these years. <laughs> Bless me, Father, I have sinned again. These are possibilities. But the only reason I'm going to write the book, if I write a second book, is so I can get booked on this show again. It's the good. only way. That's, that's the good only way it probably will happen, too. <laughs> that's I know. Idea. I know. You're not kidding around. You guys are laughing, but I know it's the only <laughs> way I'll be invited back. i got to write another book. I'll be, I'll be in the back writing another book so I can see you guys again. <laughs> well, thanks so much for being here. Thanks, thanks Lino, very much. Continue success. Take care. And uh, don't forget, the uh, Catholic TV Monthly for the month of September is out, and you can have it delivered right to your house by just letting us know at the address at the end of today's show, and it has the new schedule for the fall season here at the Catholic TV Network. Keep all the people and Jay and everybody in the prayer box in your prayers, and may Almighty God bless you and protect you throughout this holiday weekend and keep you always in his care. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. From all of us sinners to all of you sinners, have a great weekend. God bless everyone. Take care.